And now for our weekly news segment. Aloha, Tony. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> What's going on, man? Um, nothing much. Just catching up on all the UFOs and <laughs> the balloons and... <laughs> <laughs> we, we had we had to do we had to do an episode we could we couldn't not be a part oh, of this what do you part. think about the mural <laughs> <laughs> no comment <laughs> it's, it's 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 crazy honestly <laughs> it's, it's crazy like we tried for such a long time yeah but we to, made it happen it New York. and then um okay yeah thank god for the mention last time and this guy was like oh wait i have a truck i can do it oh, and so. then we chatted with the person and then you know we're not going to name him, Satoshi Nakamoto, whatever. You know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's get into the news, everybody. Okay, good. Yeah, how, was the, how was the halftime show? Sunita was watching yeah, the was, halftime I'm sorry, show. D-Martian. If like, if we, <laughs> I had warned him. I was like, it's 20 it's minutes. Like, I'm going to watch it. So I was watching it on my phone. It was good. good. It was good. It was very good. I love her. It was a great performance. <laughs> it was, who is it? Rihanna? Rihanna, yeah. Awesome. How'd she look? She looked good. She's pregnant. She like announced. Yeah, she announced the well, obviously like oh, during wow. the performance. She was like big. She like showed her belly. So, oh wow, she's oh, so yeah. she's pregnant. Okay. Well, yeah, she wasn't dancing that. It was like a mm. wonderful performance, but she wasn't like dancing too much because obviously she's pregos. Oh, but God. it was a great performance. Her voice is awesome. That's badass, dude. It was maybe great. Watch it. It's the balloon floating away. She was like floating she's a, she's actually. <laughs> maybe it's the balloon. Like performance. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, so um, as we transition to the so guys, we're gonna talk about balloons. We're I can't believe D Martian is like an expert in, <laughs> in this area. That's so so convenient. I know. All right, let's... and then we're gonna talk about aliens. <laughs> <laughs> and then um is Chad GPT coming to Minerotopia? Unfortunately not. He doesn't have a or it doesn't have a physical form. <laughs> um but it can assist with answering questions and providing information about Monerotopia. Yeah, sure. I would advise against it because he's probably going to make a poem that is going <laughs> to say that you shouldn't go to Monerotopia. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. But let's get into uh, the actual news now. Let's talk about Dubai, which is uh, going to prohibit privacy coins like Monero under a new crypto, um, crypto rule. Um, it's under the Virtual Asset Regulatory Authority, VERA, and essentially you, you can't, you know, you can deal with privacy coins, they don't like it, but they do encourage, um, they do attract uh, crypto and blockchain companies, but if you're into privacy, it's, it's just not going to, uh, to work with them. Yeah, pretty big. Um, it's pretty big that Dubai is going this direction. D. Martian, you have any comment on that? Did you see that? This latest, uh, seen, this latest banning. I haven't seen the latest banning. Bro, we got banned again. <laughs> we have, we have, we have banned, <laughs> banned in Dubai, Zcash and Monero. Were there wow. others that you mentioned? Uh, Zcash. Well, uh, okay, removes mentions from of Zcash from headline and first paragraph. It is unclear whether Zcash is affected because the regulator made exceptions. For mitigating features, which theoretically could include Zcash's unshielding option. Hmm. Okay, so that's fine. Um, yeah, but uh, Nam used to hold the Monero meetups in Dubai, and I'm not sure if she's going to hold them anymore. She posted on Twitter. Yeah, we were tweeting about it. Yeah, and, uh, she was like, "I'm yeah. afraid," and I don't blame her. Yeah, like why? You know, pretty pretty crazy though. It shows yeah. it's kind of having an effect right away, right? It, like it makes people like. It affects how people interact with Monero. For obviously, sure. Obviously, it survives, but you know, it's definitely having an effect. Yeah, but it's crazy. You should be able to just, you know, have a meetup and talk about it. You're not gonna, you know, set up a business with, you know, it's accepting Monero. You're just gonna talk about it. But yeah, uh, it's better to stay safe, I suppose, and uh, keep it underground. Uh, Nam, unless... Nam, Nam was saying she thinks they're going to pull back on it at some point. Yeah. So, yeah, I can see that happening. Yeah. Uh, well, now let's take privacy, the digital pound. Let's put it together and you get nothing. <laughs> so uh, the digital pound could coexist with private stable coins. That's what the U UK central bank says. Um, so they said that in much the same way that cash exists alongside private money. Now, Cash is private money. So what other form of private money are they talking about? Um, 
And the digital pound does not need to be a dominant form of money in order to meet its public policy objectives. It can be alongside um, other forms of money, including stable coins. Um, so, and they're talking, and they're saying that uh, they're not sure if they're going to have a CBDC, which of course they're, they're, they are going to have the CBDC because everybody's going to, to have it, what in the form of uh, digital currency. And then they talk about privacy within the um, digital uh, pound, which they actually called Britcoin. Um, or I, I think it was nicknamed by um, uh, British people, but it's funny. And um, so there's privacy concerns that many in the crypto community have voiced. And they were also acknowledged without going into detail. The paper stated that an eGBP would be subject to regular standards of privacy and data protection. And then it says that users will have at least some level of privacy because transactions will be recorded anonymously on the core ledger. And this is kind of uh, self-contradicting. I'm not sure if... So they're saying that um, it's going to be anonymous, but uh, then they're also saying that it's not going to be because they have user verification to prevent financial crime that the government nor the bank will have access to digital pound users' personal data. And what is what is that data? I guess uh, it's not, they're not going to have information on their transactions or what is that data, yeah. you know? Or they're saying that... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's what what most governments are coming out saying, right? Like, Or not most, but like, like the US yeah. too, right? If they do a CBDC, they're saying they want to maintain... Uh, you know, users' privacy, but they want to balance that with being able to uh, prevent, you know, money laundering and, you know, but, but how do you do those things if you're not essentially uh, surveilling it, right, in some in some fashion? Exactly. But so, but they're saying that the government or the bank would have access to digital pound users' personal data, but on this, they're saying that digital pound would not be anonymous because the ability to identify and verify users is needed to prevent financial crime. So yeah. what data is anonymous, you know? No, that's why they, all these yeah, countries keep saying that, right? They want to maintain yeah. the privacy that, that people yeah. get with cash, but they want to be able to, yeah, it's just obviously so. That's why it's it's not going to be private. Yeah. It, it seems like it's almost like uh, we, we won't look. Yeah. Unless, unless, <laughs> yeah. unless, yeah. unless we want to. Unless and we then, really, <laughs> really need to. And don't yeah. worry, we won't even tell you when we're doing that. All right. <laughs> It's like here's the house, but we have the the keys to your house, and yeah. we can go whenever you right. want. And as long as you trust the government, you should yeah. be good. Yeah. Uh, but then let's talk about the Biden um, administration's uh, efforts to ban crypto, essentially. And this is a lengthy blog by Nick Carter, um, so you should definitely check it out and read it. But it's essentially saying that the Biden administration is making it more difficult for banks to operate with crypto firms or for banks for banks to deal with um, clients that want to hold crypto. And then he listed a bunch of different events that lead to more and more uh, discouragement and regulations so that the banks would essentially not um, handle anything with uh, related to crypto mm -hmm. um, under the basis of, um, what did I say? There's uh, safety and soundness essentially. That's the expression that they keep using. Uh, let me give you a couple examples. Uh, on this, uh, December 6th, Senators Elizabeth Warren, John Kennedy, and Ro Roger Marshall sent a letter to crypto-friendly bank Silvergate, uh, calling them for providing services to FTX. Then December 7th, Signature um, announces it, its intent to halve deposits ascribed to crypto clients. In other words, it'll give customers their money back, then shut down their uh, accounts. Um, January 3rd, the Fed, FDIC, and the OCC released a joint statement on the risks on the risks uh, to banks engaging with crypto, not explicitly banning banks' ability to hold crypto or deal with crypto clients, but strongly discouraging them from doing so on a safety and soundness basis. Um, and there's, you know, and he details a lot more events uh, such as these. Um, but yeah, essentially, they're trying to discourage, they're trying to softly ban crypto and discourage banks to interact with uh, crypto firms and crypto users. Right. Just kind of when we thought we were moving in the opposite direction, right? With like, uh, 
Wyoming, right? Trying to create a banking charter that was crypto, right? And there, it seems like now we're, we're moving, uh, we're losing ground, right? In terms mm -hmm. of crypto integrating with the traditional banking system. Yeah, so it's like they're not banning it, but they're making it difficult for everybody, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, then let's talk about um, local Bitcoins and the fact that they're not going to offer their services anymore. Um, unfortunately, this is because uh, the very cold uh, and long uh, crypto winter, during which their volumes and market share have continued to decline. Some, so, those some big steps this week against crypto, man. I mean, the the, yes. ban, in, the ban in Dubai, um, you know, this this move that the governments are making uh, in terms of making it difficult for the traditional banking sector to to deal with crypto and local local bitcoins dropping off. But they said they said it had nothing to do with regulations, right? Like they said, yeah, no. the bear market. That seems very odd. I mean, that seems that seems strange, right? Yeah, because they've been operating for 10 years so they've been through a couple like and, and it would be there'd be more demand for it now than ever because you have people waking yeah. up to you know the desire to obtain bitcoins without kyc aml so there's i mean there's more of a market for it now than ever before right and yet right. they're closing it off right so hey, martian you have any do you follow that at all did you, did you hear about that local bitcoins closing down did I hear about it? Um, no, I didn't hear about that, actually. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I mean, uh, local Monero is still up and running, so. And yeah, that's the one I usually yeah. use. Maybe, maybe we'll see a bump, <laughs> bump in usage, even if people are looking to obtain uh, Bitcoin. Then... Yeah, no, it definitely sounds like mysterious circumstances, though, for, for them to end on due to the bear market. It seems like something else is going on there. Yeah. Sure. Probably. Because if they've been for multiple ones, this wouldn't be the first one that they will go through. So um, I don't know. But I'll, um, let's talk about um, UFOs and the Pentagon and the balloons and everything. <laughs> um, so the UFOs, people are saying that it's a distract distraction from Pfizer. They use blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline, which I do believe that is true after my research, but um, I know nothing. Uh, big tech companies coordinating with the FBI, U.S. intel to censor Americans and influence elections. Uh, Epstein client list potentially reveal deadly chemical release disaster in East uh, Palestine, Ohio, which we'll talk about actually because it's huge. Um, so it's strange that all of a sudden we have all these aliens <laughs> appearing in Canada, appearing in in the U.S. There's the fourth one, uh, the fourth object that was shut down, and the Pentagon is still live talking about it. Um, or I don't think they're talking about it right now, actually. No, they were talking about, about it before. Um, now, I have, before we get into the, the Ohio story, I have a video of um, a captured alien. Uh, for the people watching on Twitter, you might want to go on YouTube <laughs> uh, to see it. Well, let's play the video. Look at the stars on the ceiling. Wow, it's like I'm back home. <laughs> what did you pay for this spaceship? <laughs> Look at the stars. People are posting memes. People are making fun. I think I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's Martian's friend. Uh, yeah, people are posting a bunch of videos of UFOs in uh, all think, states. Yeah, yeah. I think the most interesting thing that the Pentagon said was they, they won't like confirm or deny right whether or not it's it's aliens right there they're open to any interpretations at this point right <laughs> but yeah it's it's you know and it all happened in the same time when uh this ecological disaster happened in ohio and netflix actually i think a couple of days ago they released i've been following that what's going on with that so um okay so essentially i guess the authorities uh blew up the train a train that was carrying uh hazardous uh, chemicals and then it exploded and um, a lot of people are affected. The water is affected, of course. Uh, it's like a Chernobyl, essentially, mini mini Chernobyl. Um, and actually, a couple of days before this happened, I think Netflix released a new um, Netflix show, as far as I understand. And it's about this specifically. Ohio, and a train blows up, and then uh, this happens. So 
Uh, very interesting. Let's watch the video. It's only just um, a minute and 29 uh, seconds. Uh, but also the press is actually being arrested. They're trying to tell the story of what happened in Ohio and they're being arrested. So let's watch the video. A train derailed Friday. 20 of them carrying hazardous materials as planes lit up the sky in northeastern Ohio. The evacuation order is in place for anyone within a mile radius of the crash site. These aren't, these aren't storm clouds. This is the fucking shit! The fucking shit that burned off in East Palestine! This is not fucking storm clouds! Look at it! Officials are claiming that the air and water are safe. The residents say they can still smell chlorine. They've complained about their eyes watering when they go outside. And one woman says the noxious air killed her chickens. Out of nowhere, he just started coughing really hard and just shut down and went very fast. <laughs> Get all these fucking crows. I'm not kidding. This is within 10 miles of East Palestine. You have not evacuated. Please leave the area. Right. So, mm. yeah, people are saying that um, they're using now this these UFOs to um, detract from what is happening in Ohio and you know with Pfizer and everything essentially. Uh, but it's pretty serious. It's really serious. And um, let's see. Then Justin Trudeau actually tweeted about um, them taking down an, an, an unidentified object that violated Canadian airspace. Um, they shut it down uh, with a US F-22. And then he spoke about Biden, well, as he spoke with Biden this afternoon and Canadian forces will now recover and analyze the wreckage of the object. So, um, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's interesting. Are people like so tying, much... tying this into the balloon thing too, saying that there's, there's relations? I haven't been following the Ohio thing at all. Uh, some some people have some, but I'm I've watched one video and I guess there was this one um, official or someone from China and they said that they were using it for. Um, environmental purposes for weather related activities and then it flew all the way to uh, <laughs> to the US and then but I'm not entirely sure about that story and it's hard to tell because it's a lot of uh, fake news and propaganda so it's hard to get the real information uh, but I think like all of this because we've you know we've had UFOs appearing and stuff like that for a long long time but now all of a sudden you know they're all talking about it. Just trying to get our attention. Bread and circuses. Bread and circuses. <laughs> well, what do you think, D. Martian? Uh, I, I think that there's just so much happening in the world. And at the same time, there's definitely things like that happening where the politicians are trying to distract us. So over time, I've, I've learned to, to see more and more that the, the conspiracy theorists turn out to be oracles tend to know tend to know things ahead before everything else everybody else does so i'm i'm uh, i'm always open minded to to keep an eye on on what different powerful people are doing um but at, at the same time yeah I, i'm not i'm not sure I'm not sure about uh if, if these two things are linked or if it's just two things happening at the same time but um yeah it, it is unclear why why now with the ufos why are they showing up now uh who knows <laughs> Uh, they have been working on them for a little while. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We could try to, um, if anybody in the audience wants to try to jump in, I'm going to see if I could try to get you guys to jump in while we stay on this for a sec. Mm -hmm. um, I've sent a picture on Reddit and it said, um, the U.S. facing massive shortage of conspiracy, conspiracy theories as all of them have come true. <laughs> 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 yeah, conspiracy theorists are... Uh, 
are doing well these days. <laughs> They're basically just news reporters now. <laughs> um, if anybody wants to comment, try to raise your hand. I'm going to see if I could do it while we stay on here without transitioning over. I doubt it's going to work, but I have... If not, I think we'll just call it at that point. We won't do uh, spaces portion today, but let's see. If anybody's out there mm -hmm. in the room, just raise your hand if you want to talk. I'm going to bring you up. 